Sam. Hey, Sammy. Sam. Hey. Hey, Sammy. Sammy, guess what? Guess what, Sammy? You're a hairy wizard, Sammy. What is up, SPN family and YouTube family? Wolf420 here, and we are back with another Supernatural review, season 15, episode number 6, entitled Golden Time. Y'all trying to do some water sports, man? I. Okay, so we start off with a recap of the events so far that focuses more on Cass leaving and Rowena's tragic demise. Then, we open on the scene of a girl going to Rowena's apartment door, looking for Rowena. Eventually, the girl casts a spell to unlock the door and enters the apartment. Well, aloha mora. That's pretty handy, ain't it? So the girl ransacks Rowena's apartment for a bit and exclaims, Where is the good stuff? After a moment within Rowena's place, though, the girl dies of a curse. Yep. Never fork around in a Grand Witch's home. So then we cut to the intro logo, and we open on the bunker with Sam hard at work researching, and he feels something. There's also a blurred presence starting to appear next to him for a moment. Dean enters the room and tells a joke from a cereal box. What's round and bad-tempered? A vicious circle. Dean laughs, and Sam is not amused. We are not amused, good sir. Nay, I say. We are amused, I say. What a bang on zinger, my good chum. So Sam then adds that he's been searching for God and Lilith, and Dean has been holed up in his room eating cereal. And Dean adds, and binge watching Scooby Doo. <laughs> That's awesome. Funny stuff. So Dean asks if Sam found anything, and Sam hasn't found anything yet. And then Sam asks if Dean noticed anything weird a moment ago, and he hadn't. And then they talk about the visions, and Sam hasn't had any, not since the last one with the Mark of Cain in the first play. Sam wonders if they're over, and Dean says, that's not likely. Yeah, that's not likely. You know, my friend kind of wonders if Sam is going to catch God power like some kind of messed up celestial STD after such intimate contact as a shot from the... God gun. And then that will be the way the boys can fight back. Fight back. And I think, you know, I think that is a solid theory, actually. So, then we cut to Castiel. Hell yeah, great to see Cass. Ha! <laughs> but, Chuck fucking darn it, we need to see Billy Jack in the Empty ASAP. So Cass goes to a local shop and peers into the window, eagerly awaiting the shop's opening. Eventually, the shopkeeper arrives and lets him in the shop, like he's a regular customer who often does this. Also, the shopkeeper called Cash Clarence. Great shout out to the past right there. Hell yeah. So, as Cap shops, he notices the shopkeeper pouring liquor into his morning coffee and asks if he's alright. The shopkeeper explains that he is also a volunteer fire department and they found the body of a kid in the lake also noticing that the kid had been drained of all of his blood. Cass smells a case and steps up to crack it. And then we cut to Sam, who is jogging, and I'm getting tired just watching him. So, as Sam is jogging, he suddenly gets a cold chill around him, and the blurry presence appears again. The blurry presence eventually solidifies into Eileen. So we cut to the bunker with Sam and Dean and Eileen, talking about how Eileen was in hell. Apparently, the hellhound that killed her dragged her there, and she knows how ghosts end up, and doesn't want to do that. She also don't want to go back to hell, so she wonders if they can get her into heaven, and Dean bluntly tells her the truth. But they wonder if they can put her in a ghost crystal. Well, Dean wonders, and just tells Sam to do it. Dean needs a break, so he's going back to his room, and Sam is left to carry the bag. 
So we cut to Cass looking into a case, into the case, and trying to talk to the sheriff. But the sheriff is on a haircut break. A woman at the police station asks about him being an agent, and then reveals she is looking for her son. Cass says he will help her. And then we cut back to Sam with Ghost Eileen. Sam tells her about the crystal, and Eileen says she'll take it. It's better than either alternative. And Sam tells her he's been to hell before, but Eileen can't talk about it. Soon we cut to Sam and Eileen at Rowena's place. They discover the dead girl, and we cut to reveal Sam being watched by a witch. And we cut away from there. So we cut back to Sam checking out the corpse of the girl in Rowena's place. And he sees a tattoo and recognizes it as a witch symbol. Now Sam is on the case. So we cut back to Cass questioning the sheriff. And the sheriff is trying to reassure Cass that everything in town was normal. Cass asks to see the body of the, uh, of the boy. And the sheriff tells him the town doesn't have a medical examiner. So the body was shipped to another town. Cass asks for the case files, and the sheriff questions where is Cass an agent from and wants to call his supervisor. So we cut to the bunker and a phone ringing, and Dean looking for it. He finds it and answers the call as the FBI director. The sheriff dickhead says he's checking up on the agent, and Dean asks to speak to the agent. Dean tells Cass that Sam is trying to call him and asks if he's checked his messages, and Cass says no. Dean tells Cass that Chuck is back on the board and tells him to check his damn messages, and hangs up. Cass finishes the call with his supervisor. That's chucking funny. Dean was addicted to Cass, and Cass laughed up because of it, but Dean still gives Cass a pep talk. And the sheriff tells him that he'll go get the files for him. Then we cut back to Reno's ransacked apartment, and Sam and Eileen are searching through the mess and notice it's all junk, and Sam wonders where the real stash is. Then Eileen, the friendly ghost, goes through a wall and finds it. Sam realizes Rowena kept journals of all her magic. Sam has a moment where he mourns Rowena and realizes that magic was her way to cope with the rigged game, and tells Eileen about how he killed Rowena to, so she could sacrifice herself to save the world. Sam has a strong moment asking Eileen, do you ever feel like you're the punchline to some cosmic joke? And she looks at him like, hello, look at me. But yes, Sammy, I do feel it. All the fracking time. Sam also discovers a page that fell out of the journal, and it turns out to be a spell that can resurrect the dead and the spirit becomes flesh. Now I want to know though, so you did resurrect the spirit and make it flesh, could it still get ghost sickness? Let me know your thoughts below, and while you're at it, shoot me a like and a subscribe. And then we cut over to Cass reviewing the case files of the recently found dead boy, and he's on the case. Cass does some amazing detective work with the case files, and he figures something out, and is on the move. And then we cut to Sam loading up baby with Rowena's stash. Totally radical, dude. But he is hexed. He uses sign language to Eileen to find Dean, and then the witch from earlier that was watching him takes him captive, and we cut away from there. We open on Sammy bound up in a witch's den. The witch explains the hex on Rowena's apartment, how anyone who enters will die, and apparently Sam has been bestowed upon of all the great magics left behind by Rowena. And it turns out the spell to resurrect the spirit made flesh is a one-time deal. Yeah, sure. Of course it is. We can't have that little doozy ex machina left to lie around, can we? Damn it. So it turns out the witches reveal they made a voodoo doll of Sam and can torture him at will all they like. So now the witches will use Sam to steal Rowena's stash. Not cool. So we cut over to look in on Castiel. And Cass is located in an area around the lake where a number of people have gone missing. The woman searching for her son followed Cass and doesn't think her son will be there because he knows not to go near the abandoned mine. Cass smells a clue in the mention of an abandoned mine and he asks the lady to show him where it is on the map so he can go check it out. And the lady tells Cass she will take him there. And now he's stuck with a partner. And then we cut back to Sam. As the witches hold Sam hostage, they are trying to force him to clear out Rowena's stash, and he tries to Sam talk his way out of danger and into the other appreciated witch's heart, and she resists. Soon, though, she begins to open up that the dead witch was one bitchy bitch of a witch bitch. And the witch girl still remains the captor in control and orders Sam again to get the stash. And then we cut back to Cass and the lady in the woods by the water, 
And the two walk and talk while searching the woods. And Cass eventually tells the woman that monsters are real and people are being taken by one. And this might include her son too. And as they talk and search the wood, they actually find her son. And we cut back to Sam. The witch girl continues to sell, tell Sam horror stories of the way the witch bitch sister bitch treated her. Sam tries to appeal to her and turn her, but she doesn't bite and she strikes the voodoo doll with a mortal blow. And then we come back to Cass with the woman and her son. Eventually the boy tells Cass what happened to him and the monster is revealed and as Cass is asking what the monster looked like, suddenly the sheriff steps out, gun drawn, revealed to be the monster, a djinn, and he shoots Cass. But Cass' angel heals after getting shot. Twice. And he goes stabby stab 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 happy on the sheriff's ass. And then we cut back to Sam still alive, now hauling Rowena's stash. Finally Dean arrives and he has the head witch captive at gunpoint with witch killing bullets. The witch girl starts trying to crush Sam to dust with the voodoo doll. You know, Sammy is showing amazing resistance to these assaults from the doll. Like, I wonder if maybe the doll has to have great concentration and it battles with the will of the victim. But Dean says they have a two-on-two standoff, and the witch's leader says, no, three-on-two. And then the ghost of the witch bitch sister bitch gets in the fray. Soon enough, Eileen the friendly hell ghost steps up and says, not today, bitch, and they fight. Eventually, Eileen points out the body of the witch bitch, and soon enough, Dean burns the bitch bitch. Meanwhile, the same time as the battle with Dean and Eileen and two witches, one a bitch and a witch, as well as a ghost, Sam uses a hex bag and kills the head witch. And I'm like, holy shit, son. Damn. So, I think Sam just found a way to fight back. It's witchcraft. No, yeah. Anyways, that's the way, huh? Question, though. Will that turn Sam dark and lead to Chuck's hand? Thoughts below yet again. So we cut away from there. Winchester's victorious. Now we cut back over to Cass, and surprisingly, the woman and her son aren't too freaked out by Cass stabbing that motherfucker. And he heals the boy, but it takes a huge toll on him, and Cass says he must move on and return to the game. And then we cut to Sam and Eileen, and the big moment with the resurrection spell, and Sam succeeds, and they have a beautiful moment. And then we have a beer with Sam and Dean, and Dean teases Sam for a second about being a witch. And Sam says he got lucky. And then Dean tells him he did a great job. And that Dean himself did jack shit all day. And Sam interrupted him and told him he saved his ass and killed a witch. And then Sam says that Dean can't give up. They have moves they can make. And they will figure out how to beat Chuck. And so ends the episode fading out with a powerful BM. So to sum it all up, Ding Dong the Witch is dead. Cass stabbed that ass and saved those people. You're a hairy wizard, Sammy. Eileen is back. And the boys will figure out how to fight back together, or not at all. This was a solid episode. I'm very intrigued at Sam now being a wizard. And Cass was badass with that gin. Eyes glowing, healing from wounds, and stabbing a motherfucker. So, that'll be Wolf 420 logging off. Always keep fighting, have an awesome day, be excellent to each other, and as always, people, peace out.